So this is what we taught over the weekend. This is the front door, back door principle. So the front door of the small intestine, the back door of the small intestine, and creating that sanctity of small intestine in between. So we start with the feet, and we look here at the feet, and we put them together, and we find that the left foot has an internal rotation pretty good. Right foot stops. I'm pushing pretty hard, right? And it stops there. So that means that there is some sort of unilateral psoas tension, and we suspect the psoas starts from around the um, hiatal hernia, and so that's where it can come from. Now, we take the arm, do a little muscle test to see where we need to go, and we check the hiatal hernia. We push down as a correction, or up as a correction, and the whole thing's weak. We go to the valve of Houston just to create contrast. We check, hold strong for me, Courtney, very good. And we go over here, and we go weak. We push it down, strong, and we push it up, strong and hers gets strong so we know that on the upside it strengthens it and that means that it needs to be closed so we're in a minute going to drag across the ileocecal valve in a diagonal way to the opposite shoulder and that is going to close the valve now if it was too if it was actually too closed and we needed to open it we would go just the opposite we would come down across diagonally this way and we would drag it this way and therefore open the valve so, starting off with the upper front door first. Put your feet down, your knees up. And first we're gonna start off by, by percussing to find where the stomach is. So it's the middle of the hollow place. Directly above that is the esophagus. We're gonna put our fingers right at the rib and then push down. And I'm gonna use the blade of this hand to contact and drag my hand down. So I'm not grabbing like a claw. So I'm just putting pressure with my fingertips, no nails, and like this, okay? So I'm gonna ask her to breathe in deeply. And as she breathes out, the soft, go out, breathe out, out, the diaphragm goes up, and I pull down on the stomach and the esophagus. We do it again, I'm gonna hold against her. She breathes in, and we're getting lots of squiggles in there, right, Courtney? Really good, and breathe out. And one more time, very good, Courtney, that's excellent. Breathe in. And I'm just holding down against it, and I'm going to pull down as she breathes out. Excellent. And then we're going to just wiggle. I wiggle a little bit just to make sure that it's working it down. Then I give it a little tug at the end, and we're done. Okay, so we test here to see if it worked. Strong. Press down. Good. Make it worse. And none of it makes it worse. It's strong in every direction. So we're done. Let's go to the other one now. So now, legs straight, Courtney, flat legs, not bent knees. We go to the ASIS, and we go a little bit medial to it, and we grab like a scoop of mashed potatoes, and we just come across it with our fingertips, both fingertips dragging. Now we find sort of hard spots in there, and we just milk across them. As they melt away, we go deeper and deeper and deeper. So we're just pulling across and coming up. And we're coming up to the opposite shoulder. And you'll see my position, my arms are straight and locked. I'm leaning back. I'm not pulling with my hands. It creates a very even pressure. The patient will let you do that. And it doesn't take a lot of effort on my part to just lean back and put more and more pressure. Her ileocecal valve is totally relaxed. There's no more hard spots. Probably the tenderness that it was initially there has resolved. Now it just feels like a lot of pressure. It sometimes reflects into the ileocecal or the um, sacroiliac areas, sometimes into the legs, across the colon, reflects into different places in the body. This is totally relaxed. Now I'm going to give it a final drag. Now pull back, 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 and give it a bit of a tug, and we're done. Hand me that white thing. So then we can take a stimulating device of some kind, stimulate the sternum on both sides, the rib heads, basically gallbladder, liver, diaphragm. We can stimulate the rib, basically right along the line of the rib here. And I like close here because it allows me to slide this stimulates the small intestine. 
and we're just basically making sure that the neurological and the Chapman reflexes get stimulated. We can do a little bit of stimulation to this area down here, just go inside the ASIS right from the belly button down and just maybe just work around a little bit so that that whole area gets stimulated. If you want to, you can do the other side as well. You don't have to do these things. I just sort of do it to grammatically finish the sentence. And then we go to the legs, stimulate the front of the legs, the side of the legs, the medial, vastus medius. These are all stimulating the gallbladder, liver, stomach, and not the stomach, but the small intestine. Okay, and then we want to come back and see if she tests strong. Good here, good here. Check right here. Again, make it worse. Doesn't work. Come to the place down here. Make it worse. Nice and strong. Make it better. Nice and strong. So she's locked in her position. Check the valve of Houston if she wasn't. And we could make it worse. We can make it better. Nothing to do there. So she's finished. Let's go back to the feet and look what we have. We take those feet and we turn them in. And now we have them, well, pretty much perfect, which is great. Maybe just still a little bit, but, and it feels different, doesn't it, Courtney? Okay. So, okay. So again, that's the front door, back door principle on the small intestine. Address the hiatal hernia. Find later, if you would, any issues that would test and it would trace to be an infection that would be irritating the upper digestive tract and the lower digestive tract and clean up the sanctity of the small intestine, which would be accomplished principally by gut flora complex, but also by, go by golden seal and other things that an, or act as antimicrobials for the um, small intestine. Cataplex AC is one of the best products, and as we studied yesterday, remarkable product for both upper and lower, and should be there palliatively and supportively for healing in both areas, would be okra pepsin. Why? Because of the, the okra, which helps it to be sticking to the mucosal lining, but also the E3. So it's okra pepsin E3. E3 is, E3 is the glandular component that actually promotes sort of healing in these superficial epithelial surfaces. Okay, have a good day, thank you.